All righty, let's pick it back up. Uh, this is Mike Falco. We are going to do part two of my ideal sequence. Okay, so the first step that we have, right, is a manual email. Now, we talked about making an actual connection with the person and their potential pains rather than assuming um, what they will need. Now, I mentioned in the first video as well, and this is just a quick recap if anybody skipped, um, I do not love the idea of bombarding multi-channel um, outreach in a given day, right? I like something like this. So a manual email on day one, that's great, right? Then let's view their LinkedIn profile after one day, right? This just puts our name in front of their face. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit continue there. And I don't need to add a note here. Very good. Now, day two, sorry, day three is going to be when we hit the phones. Now, why wait till day three? We want to give a little bit of breathing room for the prospect to read, digest, and get back to us from the manual email. We put a lot of work into this, right? We shouldn't just assume that if a person is going to reply, they're going to reply within the first day. Um, people go away, people get sick, so on and so forth. So if you're putting in a ton of work for this manual email, let's give it a little bit of room to breathe. That's my perspective on it anyway. Um, okay, cool. So we're going to do a phone call, and this is going to be one day after the previous step. Very good. Um, now, what comes next? So we have three days in a row here where our name is in front of our prospect's eyeballs. That's pretty good. What's better? Four. So on the fourth day, and this is a personal opinion here, you're going to hear from almost every other sales leader that I've um, seen on LinkedIn that this is not the way to go about this, but I disagree. Um, this email, in my opinion, should be a reply to the previous thread, and it should be very short and to the point. So, hey, blah, blah. Um, I'm curious, now, curious if you had a chance to blah, blah, blah. Check my email out. Okay. Now, starting with curious isn't good. That's a, actually a, a bad word for sales and I'm kind of blanking right now. I could pull up another one. But um, the point here is, guys, this email should be very, very short. It should be one sentence with a quick call to action. The reasoning is it's a reply to a previous thread, right? So in a reply to a previous thread, we want that valuable content that we sent them right in front of their eyeballs again. Okay, so if this email is nice and short and they open up on mobile, they'll still be able to see the body of your first email, which is where your valuable content is. Um, don't worry about this is just, again, my opinion. I don't worry about throwing value, net new value in front of them every time that I reach out. Right. Um, if our theory is the manual email is multiples better than the automated then we should take that time and use a mechanism like this reply to get in front of their eyeballs with that valuable content, which is email one. Again, my theory, um, down a debate if anybody would like, this is just what I've seen success with. And there's multiple ways of doing everything, right? Okay, cool. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit save there. Next is going to be a LinkedIn connection request. What's better than four days in front of the prospect size? Correct five. Okay, cool. Now, this interesting um, piece here, what do you send in your connection request? I always like the generic from LinkedIn. Something like that, right? Continue. Cool. Um, good. Okay. And then this is where I would recommend giving the prospect a breather, right? We've been in front of their eyeballs a good bit. Um, we've sent them one manual email. We've sent them one follow-up email. What I like here is actually um, a second automated email around four days after that connection request goes out. Okay. Now, this if you're 
if you're unloading the clip in your first email in terms of your value prop and their potential pain points, don't do that. Focus on one or two things, keep it concise, keep it simple. Now, the second email that we're sending here, right, is automated, so we don't have to spend the time like we did on the first email, but should present something new because our first try at this obviously didn't really hit a, a you know, hit a pain point or hit a trigger, right? So use your next best kind of content here. It's almost like you're getting back in their email or back in their inbox for the first time. Um, and we're giving them a couple of days of a break here, okay? Now from here, what I like is intermittent, sorry, intermittent profile views. Now I will tell you guys this, be careful here um, in terms of the volume. Um, I would only actually do this for your highest priority contacts. If you have a high volume of emails and, and content going out or prospects being reached. Why? LinkedIn doesn't like automation tools. So even though we're hitting the execute button and then it's going over to LinkedIn and, and running through, you're still hitting LinkedIn's uh, API. Okay. So um, I'm sorry, not API, but your, your, you know, activity limit, let's call it. All righty. So we have day 13, we have a LinkedIn profile view. Now on day 14, I just want to repeat what we did in the beginning of this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make this a reply. It's going to follow up on my last message. Um, and I, once again, keep this short, sweet to the point, um, without pain funneling, without, um, value props. We're saying our emails are good that we're sending out. Let's get that content in front of their face again. And I would drop a, a meeting link here. Okay. So on to the next. Now, this is where I think it's different for every company and every team. I have some customers that I will run this through day like 59 or 65, right? With the gap in between messages extending. I always recommend one final call step towards the end of the sequence here for your MVP prospects. Now, how are you gonna go about doing that? Well. <clears throat> If you built your personas out correctly and go check out that video, if you haven't seen it, right. You can then say, all right, I have this due task, right. And I just want to filter down to persona equals one of these three. These are my like, you know, top three, um, kind of groupings of people based on demographics, firmographics, whatever. Right. So a, you're not going to have time to call every single prospect. So you should absolutely prioritize the, um, you know, high value ones or potential high value ones. Um, but B just because we went through all of this and it didn't work out, right. We still have only made one call up into this point, And I think that that would be an error. If we have the wrong email, right. For the, for the prospect, let's say it's a catch all email, right. If we have the wrong email, then in theory, all we've really done is sent them a connection request on LinkedIn and made one call that we didn't get connected on, right? That's not enough backfill for any potential irregularities, right? Like having the wrong email. All right, cool. This is getting a little bit longer here. So I'm going to pause there, but that's just a quick look at um, how I like to build sequences. I like a lot of activity in the beginning, but not overbearing in a single day. Then I like stretched out automated emails along with a call step towards the end and some LinkedIn profile views mixed in between. All right. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. Oh, also uh, check out my newsletter that I just came out with. Um, and I'll leave this link in. I'll leave this link in the comments here, but every week on Friday, I'm going to be reviewing three different SaaS uh, slash AI sales tools. Uh, so Apollo obviously makes the list as number one. I'll also be grading them on a scale of one to 10. Um, okay, cool. Thanks everybody.